in the love of truth and, and the spirit of Jesus, we, we unite for the worship of God, God and the service of humanity. And as the Lord's free people, we agree, we agree to walk together in all God's ways made, made known or to be made known to us. God is in this house today, for God longs to be in relationship with us. God is in our house today, for God loves the sinners and the saints. God is in your house today, for God sees all, claims all, and loves all. God is in this house today, so let us worship holy God. Good morning. My name is Tom O'Brien, and I am blessed to serve Memorial Congregational Church as pastor and teacher. This morning, know that no matter who you are, no matter where you are physically, no matter where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. As we gather our hearts and our minds together, let's join together in our opening hymn.
let us pray. Gracious God, Zacchaeus valued money over people and power over equality. He was a sinner, but so are we. Like Zacchaeus, we are quick to prioritize the wrong things, valuing our to-do lists over family time, our own success over a relationship with you, and wealth over generosity. We lose sight of what really matters. We lose sight of love. Forgive us for our ignorance and impatience. Call us back to the life you long for us to lead. With humility and gratitude, we pray. Amen. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ms. Stephanie. I'm the Minister of Youth and Families here at Memorial Congregational Church. I am so happy to be here in the sanctuary today. I needed a little change in scenery this week, and um, I thought this was such a nice and warm and welcoming place uh, to bring you a message from. So this morning, our scripture reading is about a man named Zacchaeus. This story is a great example of how to show Jesus' love to everyone. Zacchaeus was a tax collector. Now, most people think of tax collectors as very awful and greedy people. They would take money from the people in the community to make themselves rich. And that's exactly what Zacchaeus did. Now, we need to pay our taxes. It's very important that we pay our taxes and help support our schools and our fire, depart de fire departments and different things in our community. But we also don't want to be cheated out of our money. So people in the community did not like Zacchaeus, but Zacchaeus knew that Jesus was coming to town and he wanted to see Jesus. Zacchaeus was not a very tall man. He was very short and he couldn't see Jesus through the crowd. So he climbed up in a tree so he could get a better view. When Jesus came by, he saw Jesus, Zacchaeus in the tree and he said, Zacchaeus, come down. I'm going to go to your house and stay. And everyone was surprised that Jesus would want to go to a tax collector's house. And it's just such a great example of Jesus showing love to everyone, even those in the community who might not have been very well liked. So Zacchaeus, realized all of the wrong things that he had done and he said he was sorry to Jesus he said I'm sorry I will change my ways I will give everything I own back to the people that I took it from and Jesus said I love you and you are forgiven and Zacchaeus was shown Jesus unconditional love that day I remember this story from when I was a little girl and um, I was always kind of short myself um, and there were times when I wanted to see things that I wasn't able to see. Um, but there are just times in our lives when we feel left out or feel like we can't be part of something that we want to be part of. And that's what was happening to Zacchaeus. And Jesus showed Zacchaeus that he can still be part of Jesus' world and of Jesus' love. This morning, I would like to teach you a song that I learned about Zacchaeus when I was a little girl. It's a song that you can look up on YouTube. Um, there's many different uh, recordings of it on there. But um, you can, I was singing it through a few times, and you can try to sing along with me. So it starts, Zacchaeus was a wee little man, a wee little man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And as the Savior passed that way, he looked up in the tree. And he said, Zacchaeus, you come down. For I'm going to your house today. For I'm going to your house today. I'll sing it again so you can hear it one more time. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, a wee little man, a wee little man was he, he climbed, he climbed up, up in a sycamore tree, tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And 
as the Savior passed that way, he looked up in the tree, and he said, For I'm going to your house today, for I'm going to your house today. Now, if you'd like to try to sing that one at home, I would love for you to send me a recording of you singing. I would love to hear your version of Zacchaeus. Please remember to show God's love to everyone whenever you have a chance. Sometimes people may feel left out when you don't even know it. And they deserve our love and our kindness. Have a great day. Listen now for these words from God in Luke's Gospel, chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. Entering Jericho, Jesus passed through the city. There was a wealthy person there named Zacchaeus, the chief tax collector. Zacchaeus was trying to see who Jesus was, but he couldn't do so because of the crowd, since he was short. In order to see, Zac see Jesus, Zacchaeus ran on ahead, then climbed a sycamore tree that was on the route. When Jesus came to the spot, he looked up and said, Zacchaeus, hurry up and come on down. I'm going to stay at your house today. Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and welcomed Jesus with delight. When everyone saw this, they began to grumble. Jesus has gone to a sinner's house as a guest. Zacchaeus stood his ground and said to Jesus, Here and now, I give half my belongings to poor people. If I've defrauded anyone in the least, I'll pay them back fourfold. Jesus told the tax collector, Today salvation has come to this house. For this is what it means to be a descendant of Sarah and Abraham. The promised one has come to search out and save what was lost. Here ends our reading. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God. For you are our rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Stephanie mentioned a little while ago that she was always kind of short. Couldn't always see what she wanted to see. I have to admit that it's been a really long time since I've had that problem. <clears throat> For most of my life, I was, I was taller than the average person. And I never really paid attention to how that affected me. A few, uh, a few months ago, maybe about a year ago, um, I was at a protest with a, a fellow colleague, another uh, clergy uh, in the area, and she, um, she is shorter than I am. And she was concerned about going to this protest because there were going to be so many people there. And she asked if I and, and another taller clergy person um, would go with her. And walking alongside of her in, you know, in this crowd of a few thousand people, I never realized how difficult it would be to be in a crowd like that if you weren't my size. You know, so often I'm able to be in a crowd like that and simply peer over people's heads and see how many people there are or how far we were going or, or what's on ahead of us. And I never really thought about how difficult it could be for someone in a different situation than me. I never really thought about what other people see from their perspective. So often we minimize Zacchaeus to, to two simple points of his character. He's a wee little man, and he's a tax collector. Now, being short sets up the scene, and being a tax collector, you know, lets us know that he's evil. The story doesn't really get into why Zacchaeus is so interested in Jesus, but he is. Zacchaeus makes a real effort to see Jesus, and because Zacchaeus seeks Jesus, Jesus sees him. 
throughout the Gospels, we see how Jesus helps everyone. There are no lines to who Jesus reaches out, no ideologies that Jesus sticks to. Jesus helps everyone, children of Roman soldiers and Jewish tax collectors working for Rome. But through it all, all of the work that Jesus does, it's for the good of the poor. Jesus sees all who seek justice. The problem isn't that Zacchaeus is a tax collector. The problem is that Zacchaeus is a corrupt tax collector. But that's the system that Zacchaeus supported. That's how the system worked. The tax collectors were able to skim off a little from the top. As long as they gave on, gave to Rome what, what Rome, what the emperor felt he deserved, tax collectors were able to take a little bit for themselves. And Zacchaeus had taken so much money and held onto and hoarded so many riches that when he finally repents, he's able to give back four times what he took from people, how he defrauded people. Because that's how rich he was. He had that much money that he could throw away. It's interesting to wonder about what Zacchaeus gives up to follow Jesus. Is Zacchaeus able to pay back people that he defrauded by four times and give away half of what he has to the poor and still have money left over to be considered rich, to take care of himself? Or does Zacchaeus bankrupt himself to repent for his, his wicked ways? Jesus reaches out to, sees, and seeks everyone. And in doing so, it, Jesus seeks to change the systems that we're a part of. The work that Jesus does is about changing systems. But of course, that means changing individuals, especially the people who benefit from those systems. Now, Zacchaeus was part of a corrupt system, and Zacchaeus isn't called on to change the entire system himself. Zacchaeus' repentance is that the resources that he has always had are now also available to the poor. Zacchaeus is driven to acts of social justice, to righting the wrongs of injustice that he himself had a hand in perpetrating. And Jesus sees Zacchaeus because Zacchaeus seeks Jesus. I think that we're all here because we're seeking something. I seek a better world, a world that I see reflected in Jesus' teachings and ministry. I seek a relationship with Jesus that will lead me to advocate for and to co-create a world of justice, peace, and love a world that I believe our creator intended and intends for all creation. Jesus sees us and calls to us just as we are. Jesus invites us in. Jesus doesn't demand anything from us. But seeking Jesus being with Jesus, listening to Jesus, and following Jesus helps us to see things from a different perspective, from a perspective that may not be our own. It's like considering Zacchaeus' perspective or me considering Stephanie's or my other colleague. It's about the rich looking through the eyes of the poor, about white people seeking to understand the perspectives of black indigenous, and people of color. It's about the privilege, the privileged people seeing the systems from which we benefit through the eyes of those who are oppressed by the same systems. By seeing those other perspectives, we can begin to seek Jesus' call in our lives and see the path that we are called to walk. And that might be uncomfortable. 
that doing that work might mean that we have to give up comforts and special privileges and bonuses and things that make our lives easier. But when we seek Jesus, Jesus sees us just as we are with our conflicts and doubts as we fight with fears from within and without. Jesus seeks us and Jesus finds us. Jesus welcomes us, pardons and cleanses us by giving us chance after chance to do better. And Jesus relieves us of our burden by reminding us that we don't do this work alone. So join me as we continue to seek Jesus, as we try to see this world from different perspectives. Look through the eyes of others and hear Jesus' call to you. I'm going to stay with you today. Because when we seek Jesus, Jesus sees us just as we are. Amen. As we listen to Marie Mahatchak's wonderful musical offering, I also invite you, uh, if you're watching on Facebook right now, to let me know how I might pray for you this morning. In the comments, um, add in your, your joys or your concerns or any prayers that you'd like us to lift up. Just as I We come before God, seeking God, seeking peace in our lives, peace in our hearts, in our homes, in our world. We come together offering the joys and the concerns that we share. I invite you to offer up your prayers in your homes, in your hearts. You can also send prayer requests to me at pastor at mccsudbury.org 
Um, we have an MCC a private group on Facebook. If you'd like to join that, you can email me. And you can also, um, we've created an, an electronic connection card at mccsudbury.org slash prayers, where you can also send prayer requests. Let's be together now in the spirit of prayer. O oh, holy God, we come before you. We seek you in our hearts and in our communities. We come to you from a world that is full of turmoil, from lives that are struggling in so many different ways. We come before you with friends and loved ones who are physically suffering, mentally suffering, spiritually suffering. And we ask God that you be with us during this time, especially during this time of COVID-19. We pray that you be with all who are affected, with family and friends and loved ones in places like Arizona, where Jill's family is, in those hot spots, like in care facilities, in senior facilities, in nursing homes. We pray for Ed Thomas and for others who are living in facilities like that and for those who serve and work in those facilities. We pray for all of the doctors and nurses, for Dr. Sarah, Bobby's niece, and for everyone who is caring in hospitals. We pray for Carol Huffman and her crew, for the Prior Road staff and residents, for all who are seeking a connection during this time, who feel pulled away from family and friends and love, and who have to choose emotional and social connections, choose to avoid emotional and social connections to remain physically healthy. And we pray, God, for our leaders, the leaders of our government, the leaders of our schools, of our businesses. We pray that you give them wisdom and courage to make tough choices, choices that protect all of us, especially the most vulnerable, protect us physically, protect health, and protect the way that we are able to live. Be with us, God. Grant us peace and help us to live out your love. God, we lift up these prayers to you. We lift up the names that are on our prayer list, and we lift up the unspoken prayers in our heart. As we lift up to you the words that Jesus taught his disciples and taught us, praying together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.
Hi again. Um, a few weeks ago, we started a new summer series um, called Unraveled, and we talked about an intergenerational art project for the entire congregation. I finally had a chance to get everything put together, and I have made these bags of fabric strips that you can take home. I will put them in a bin outside of the main entrance. Each week you can write a prayer on one of the fabric strips and at the end of the summer we will weave them together into a beautiful intergenerational art piece that we can hang in the sanctuary. Um, these pieces of fabric might not look very beautiful right now, but when we put them together um, with all of our love and our prayers, I'm sure it's going to be something beautiful for us to enjoy. Um, thank you, and you can grab them whenever you have a chance to swing by. And join us this week for um, our, the start of our book discussion. We'll be discussing James Cohn's The Cross on the Lenten Tree. It's a, a powerful study of liberation theology and um, really helping to understand the ways that we can find hope in times of desperation uh, through the eyes of of black Christians who have found, been able to use their faith and to use these Im the image of the cross to find hope even during the most desperate times. And save the date for August 22nd, uh, where we will have electronics recycling and also personal uh, and business document shredding here in the church parking lot. Um, both will happen between nine and one o'clock. And you can just come and somebody will come and, and take, take the items out of your car and dispose of them for you. We thank everyone who continues to donate and to support the ministries here. We uh, invite you to continue to do so online through Venmo or uh, at mccsudbury.org slash donate. You can also, of course, mail a check to the church. And we thank you very much for all of the ways that you continue to support us. And so our service has ended. Let our service begin. Go forth into the world and serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Loving and serving God. Rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit, now and into the life everlasting. May the Lord bless you as you walk the way of Christ Jesus in thought, word, and deed. May Christ's life be yours, now and always. And may God be with you till we meet again.